basically, my name is Terrence um, Copeland. I'm, I'm a developer at Elon University. Um, my little problem that I had here was um, basically I had to submit information to a vendor using JSON format. And of course, I had to get data out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to show you how you could take um, how you can go through a PS object, for example, and change values or even drop values that you don't need, as well as my biggest issue was actually having a value, a single value, and putting it in a an array, All right? Just a single value. Usually, when you have an array with JSON and it's just one value, JSON doesn't want to put it in an array. But um, I'm going to show you how I got around that particular um, pro uh, problem, okay? So this script is right here. It's just a small of what I made here. It's just a small script. So what you can see is that what I'm doing is I'm reading a CSV file. So here we have my CSV file. And as you can see, here are all the columns in regards to that CSV file in regards to whatever or whoever the student is um, and all their data. OK, so we got some everything basically in here is a string. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I went through and just parsed it right quick within the PS object and convert it over to its proper value, and then also removed whatever fields I don't need it or added what fields I did need. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is you can see here, it imports the CSV and it pipes it to a for each. So it, as it pipes it to a for each, you can see here there's another for each which cycles through each data member of that PS object. And it looks at that PS object and says, is this considered as a date? Does it, it uses a regex and says, hey, does this have a date at the beginning or does it have date at the end? This is one of those tricks I learned at the meeting. So basically I'm using regex and um, here I go again. I'm in the regex. I'm saying, oh, if it passes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, if it passes the blank value that is, that is um, blank, then I'm going to assign a null value to it. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here within that PS object. I'm going to also assign it as a date time and I'm going to put a universal time to it. OK, and we'll see what that comes out to be. Um, again, down here, I'm converting the GPA to a double. So I'm taking that string and converting it to a double. And another for each loop that I did was here. I'm checking for Boolean values, true or false values. If it's true or it matches, if that pro property matches uh, to be true or false, the value of that property, then I'm actually coming down here and converting it because I know it's a Boolean to the actual um, Bool type. Okay. And down here, what we're doing here is I'm going through the rest, going through the properties again. And then I'm saying, okay, if the property name matches any of these names within my regexes, I'm going to go ahead and create a hash object for it. OK, which is going to which is going to include a name property and an ID property. All right. And then also I got some other things here that it does as well, which I, I which it does the, pretty much the same. OK, so as you can see here, I'm going through a loop for all for this PS object, all these PS objects to come in and I'm going through cycling, converting my data over to the proper type. All right. Now, what happens is when I run this script, what we're going to see is. OK, so it gets converted over to a JSON format. So if we come up here now and we look at it, we can see that, that those values now are coming in. And you can see here I have any Boolean value is now a true. It's not a it's not a string. It's actual Boolean now because there's no quotes around it and so forth. Um, my date values, you can see here was was converted over to a universal time date and time like I wanted it. It was just a, if you come back over here to a date value in my CSV file. And let me see that. You can see that any dates that we have in here was just a regular date. So now I've converted those dates over to an actual universal time and date. OK. And then again, as you can see here, here's where I created my hash objects for each assigned property within the, the CSV that I want to be that contain a name and an ID. Now, the initial script has a little bit more to it. This is just a a kind of like script that I've kind of written to go along and test data and so forth to get things going. Now, when I was saying earlier, my hardest part was doing this. You see how in student groups you have it in an array? Well, when you do JSON and you pass one object in it with whether it's got the name and the ID, it treats it as the others and it just creates a single array without the actual, a single array, a single object without the actual array parameter, without the actual array brackets. I looked online to see how I could get around this, and I 
And one of the suggestions was to use a hair string. But when I used hair strings, I always got like the, the characters, you know, the back, um, the carriage return characters and the um, line feed characters showing up. So it, I couldn't get those to, to come out of my um, JSON object. So what did I do was a neat, I thought was a neat little trick was when you come in here, what it does is I create an array. Here's my object. I just plugged in some default values. I create an array, ass assign that array to my custom, assign that custom object to my array. And then I actually assign that array, I mean that array to my actual list. And what that did was create a depth, which in turn created an array of this particular object for that, to put with those properties. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that was the hardest thing. And like I said, I've seen a lot of things online saying, hey, this is how you do it. And a lot of it referred to using a hair string, but I got away, got around that without using a hair string by using actual this, this type of code right here by taking an array and putting it within a list. And then a, a nice, another thing that I took advantage of was I know we don't see this a lot. I actually use the class in regards to addressing. Um, so a lot of us use like PS objects or custom objects. I've actually, I decided to use a class. I thought this was a good use case for a class. So I actually went in and actually used the class. And as you can see here, I created another list, which in turns, I can now just initiate my class and add whatever values that I want. And then once I add my values, I can actually get a rid of those actual fields. So now I'm also going through my PS object and I'm deleting fields that I don't need. So here you have a little bit of adding fields, going through changing data types within a field, and then actually removing fields that are no longer needed. So now I got my, so these, these address fields that you see here, I don't need them in my JSON object. So what I do is since I'm pulling in, since I'm pulling in this JSON object, I'm removing all the fields that I don't need. And this is a little trick for anybody that says, hey, I need to remove these fields from this PS custom object. I really don't need them, you know, but you now you know that you can go through properties within a PS custom object and remove them or add objects that you want. Okay, right. cool. cool. Thanks, Terrence.